वेलकम टू मैड लैक्टो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वाइटामिन एंड दैट इज वाइटामिन डी और यू कैन से खाली कैल्सिफिरोल बेसिकली इट इज ए फैट सोलेबल वाइटामिन एंड एज वी नो दैट द फैट सोलेबल वाइटामिन कॉन्ट बी इजिली एक्सक्रिटेड फ्रॉम अवर बॉडी इट्स मीन दैट लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ द वाइटामिन डी कॉज टॉक्सिसिटी इन अवर बॉडी बिकॉज इट कॉन्ट बी इजिली एक्सक्रिटेड फ्रॉम अवर बॉडी इट हैज टू फॉर्म Vitamin D2, ergocalciferol, and vitamin D3, colecalciferol. D2 is a basically the plant source, and the D3 is basically the animal source. So if you see here, vitamin D has two forms: vita D2, that is actually the ergocalciferol, that is actually the plant source and the next form is the vita d3 or you can say coli calciferol that is actually animal source or you can say it can also be taken by the different supplements vita d3 so important sources of the vitamin d that is the liver and the fish fatty fish important thing which you have to remember about the milk human milk has low amount of the vitamin d it's mean that babies that are only rely on the breastfeeding face the vitamin d deficiency it's mean that physicians prescribe the supplements to the babies that is vitamin d supplements or physician says that that child should take sun bath because vitamin d3 naturally produced under the skin that is another important thing that is the endogenous productions of the vitamin d in our body so that actually fulfill the vitamin d deficiency in the children supplements as well as the sun basket okay before we discuss the mechanism of the vitamin d we will see the functions of the vita d parathyroid hormone and the calcitonin okay so basically you see the thyroid hormone that is actually present in the neck region here is basically the thyroid thyroid gland okay so at the both opposite sides you will see the presence of the para thyroid gland here are basically the two glands thyroid gland and at the opposite side you will see the para thyroid gland okay thyroid gland produce the most important hormone that is calcitonin parathyroid gland produce the parathormone and vitamin d actually produce endogenous in our body and it can also be taken from outside okay first of all vitamin d parathormone and the calcitonin what actually they perform function in the intestine vitamin d actually increase the absorption of the calcium and the phosphate in the intestine that's the most important function of the vitamin d in the intestine that is the absorption of the calcium and the phosphate po4 3 negative in this intestine that's the most important functions of the vitamin d and okay parathormone that is the hormone produced by the parathyroid gland okay actually this hormone activate the vitamin d actually vitamin d present in inactive form it will first convert into the active form with the help of the parathyroid hormone it's mean that it will activate parathormone activate the vitamin d that is the function obviously when the vitamin d become active then you will see the 
large absorptions of the calcium and the phosphate from the intestine. Okay. Next is the calcitonin. So calcitonin actually inhabits the absorptions of the calcium in the intestine. Okay. That's the function of the calcitonin decrease the absorptions of the calcium from the intestine. Okay. Next is the vital D. Obviously, by the absorption from the intestine, substance absorbed from this intestine and go into the blood. So, it means that vitamin D actually increase the amount of the calcium and the phosphate PO4 3 negative in the blood. By absorption from the intestine, these substances will go into the blood. It means that calcium and the phosphate amount increase in our blood. Okay. Parathormone, that's the most important. That hormone actually maintain or increase the amount of the calcium in our blood. That's the most important thing. By taking calcium from the bone, that is the parathormone. Okay. Next is the calcitonin. Again, that is the opposite function. Calcitonin and parathormone act opposite. Okay. In the calcitonin, calcitonin basically decrease the amount of the calcium in the blood. It will increase the amount of the calcium in the blood. Calcitonin will decrease. Okay. Function of the vitamin E on the bones. Actually, vitamin D extract, demineralize, mobilize the calcium and the phosphate from the bone. Okay, you will see the demobilization of the calcium and the phosphate from the bone. That is the function of the vitamin D. Maintain the calcium in our blood. Okay, parathormone actually do increase the demineralization of the calcium from the bone in our blood that is the function of the parathormone and the calcitonin do opposite to the parathormone obviously bone it actually increase the desorptions of the calcium from the bone actually it decrease the desorption or demineralization it means the calcitonin deposit the calcium in our bone and parathormone release the calcium from the bone and enter it into the blood. Okay. Vitamin D function on the kidney. Actually, vitamin D enhance the reabsorptions of the calcium and the phosphate in the kidney. Okay. Parathormone do opposite. Okay. It actually increase the concentrations of the calcium in our blood. But there is a difference. It actually decreases the absorption of the phosphate. It actually phosphaturia. Okay. And calcitonin actually do opposite. Actually, calcitonin decrease the reabsorption of the calcium in the kidney. So here are basically simple is that. Vitamin D and the parathormone maintains the amount of the calcium in our blood. And calcitonin maintain the calcium in our bone. So here are basically the different functions of the vitamin D, PTH and the calcitonin. Now we will discuss the mechanism of the vitamin D. So first of all, under the skin, you will see the presence of the 7 dehydro dehydro cholesterol that is actually the intermediate of the cholesterol in the presence of the sunlight this 7 dehydrocholesterol will convert into the cholecalciferol that is actually the vita d3 in the presence of the sunlight okay Important thing which you have to remember in the old age, 7 dehydrocholesterol decrease. 
ultimately the production of the vitamin d3 decrease in the old people so that's why we prescribe the vitamin d3 in case of old people okay this cholic acidiferol that is the vitamin d3 by through the blood enter into the liver okay now you see the presence of the vitamin d3 in the liver okay and that vitamin also can come from the oral route so it's mean that if someone take the vitamin d2 and the d3 d2 actually come from the plant source and the d3 if someone take the d3 supplements okay that from the stomach it will go downward into the intestine from the intestine you will see that will absorb into the liver how as we know that vitamin d is actually the fat soluble vitamin so actually you will see the four fat soluble daca daca vitamin d e k a these are basically the fats all fat soluble vitamins go towards the liver with the help of the chylomicron so chylomicron chylomicron is the main transporter of the fat soluble vitamins so now in this case you see both vita d2 and vita d3 has been reach in the liver so now what will happen so in the liver you will see the presence of the enzyme that is 25 hydroxylase okay 25 hydroxylase convert d2 and d3 into the 25 hydroxy coli calciferol okay in the presence of the enzyme that is the 25 hydroxylase okay 25 hydroxylase enzyme convert the d2 and d3 into 25 hydroxy coli calciferol that is another name of this compound is actually the calcidiol that is the calcidiol okay now this compound will go to the liver because the other enzyme that can work the vitamin d into the active form is actually present in the kidney so now this compound 25 hydroxy coli calciferol will go into the kidney okay now this 25 25 25 hydroxy coli calciferol convert into the in the kidney convert into the 125 di hydroxy coli calciferol in the presence of the enzyme that is the 1 hydroxy hydroxy lase that's the most important thing now you have find the active form of the vitamin that is 125 dihydroxy coli calciferol or you can say calcitriol okay now you see two hydroxylation reaction first actually present in the liver and second in the kidney that is the active form now this active form of the vitamin d will perform the function as we have discussed the are these function related to the intestine blood bone and kidney will be performed by the active form of the vitamin and that is the calcitriol okay so actually as we had discussed vitamin d increase the absorption of the calcium from the intestine into the blood then how basically now this active form from the kidney will go into the will go into the enterocytes enter enterocytes cells of the intestine so what actually vitamin d do in the enterocyte so basically calcitriol active form of the vitamin actually here is the receptor for the binding of the calcitriol now calcitriol bind to the 
receptor that are actually present in the enterocyte. Here is the calcitriol. Okay. Now you see the complex receptor and the calcitriol. Now this receptor and the calcitriol activate the transcription. Here is basically the DNA molecule and they will actually activate the transcription and ultimately you will see the formation of the messenger RNA and ultimately you will see the formations of the protein and that is cell binding protein cell binding protein okay so actually this protein actually bind the calcium it is actually the calcium binding protein that is cell binding now this protein absorb or attach the calcium from the intestine and move into the blood stream okay now the calcium has been entered into the blood that is the role of the vitamin okay that's the most important thing if there is a damage in the kidney it's mean that there is no production of the active form of the vitamin d it's mean that in case of renal failure it's mean that there is no active form of the vitamin D. There is no active reabsorption of the calcium from the intestine into the blood. And you will see the weakness of the bone because there is no sufficient amount of the calcium actually present in the blood. And ultimately that calcium go into the bone. Okay. So if we correlate the calcium in the bone and the blood. So as we have discussed the most important hormone that actually demin mobilize the calcium from the bone into the blood here is basically the bone and here is the blood stream okay so basically parathyroid hormone actually release the calcium from the bone into the blood okay so actually parathyroid hormone also activate this enzyme one hydroxylase ultimately you will see the more productions of the calcitriol so calcitriol also do the same work and that is the it will actually mobilize the calcium from the bone into the blood so now parathyroid hormone and the vitamin d do the similar work they actually release the calcium from the bone and uh, enter into the blood only vitamin d do work only when it is when it is necessary to do that okay on the other hand calcitonin do opposite work calcitonin actually calcitonin actually do opposite work it actually mineralize the bone that's the most important thing so actually it is balanced between the parathyroid function of the parathormone calcitriol and the calcitonin so it actually maintain the demineralization and mineralization of the bone so important thing which you have to remember vitamin d actually maintain the calcium in the blood if there is deficiency of the vitamin then there is deficiency in the blood calcium deficiency in the blood stream so ultimately the calcium from the bone that is actually the reservoir of the calcium ultimately calcium move into the blood so actually we have to maintain the calcium in the blood okay so these basically after that these three things Parathormone, calcitonin and the calcitriol do similar work that we have discussed here. So, this is all about the vitamin D or you can say polycalciferol. If you still have any question, you may ask in the comment section. Thank you so much.